One thing China has proven is that they have some of the most lax controls on chemical plants, manufacturing, you name it. Fox come with suicide nets, forced abortions. Their rivers routinely catch on fire. We have completely clean coal power plants in the United States and Canada that put out nothing but water vapor and carbon dioxide. That's why they pass laws to tax those. Well, they didn't pass laws. Obama just said so and taxes them and regulates them to, quote, bankrupt them in his words. But China builds multiple new plants a week with no controls, no scrubbers, just a plant, water turbines, and the stacks. Well, London Guardian reports China warned over insane plans for new nuclear power plants. I mentioned how 300-plus uh, containment uh, areas of, of uh, TEPCO believes may start blowing up at Fukushima. Again, I've never been against nuclear power, except these corporations don't run these things properly and don't retire plants. I mean, they run these plants like you'd run your frat house. There's like beer bottles laying around, except they're radioactive. Uh, China warned. He Zhong Yu, I think you pronounce it, a leading Chinese scientist, says the country is not investing enough in safety controls after lifting the post-Fukushima disaster reactor ban. And it goes on. He ran the country's nuclear weapons programs, you name it, and says that they're going to build scores of these plants basically on the same type of designs the U.S. had 40 years ago. I mean, this is a disaster in the making. Go read the London Guardian investigative report. And I only mention that because it shows the above-the-law nature of governments. Take the Clintons. Hundreds of millions of dollars the last decade of, of charity money they kept for private jets and, and mansions and foreign dictators giving them money. London Guardian again is reporting on this. So is Associated Press. Clinton Foundation donors got weapons deals from Hillary uh, Clinton's State Department. So you give money to Hillary Clinton and then she says we can give weapons to this country billions of dollars i mean just unprecedented corruption because they're getting away with it now harry dent's been coming on the show i don't know five years or so and he's a best-selling author made a lot of big predictions in the 80s and 90s was one of the top guys at main capital he's a routine guest folks know who he is harry dent research.com harry dent.com forward slash alex jones to find some specials and deals on his books that he's kind enough to offer our listeners uh, but I wanted to get him on because he's the author of The Demographic Cliff and the editor of the uh, free newsletter, Economy and Markets. And I won't go over his whole bio and where he's worked and what he's done. Folks know he's a uh, prestigious guy. But he did accurately predict that we would see starting last year global depressionary curves. And we're now seeing that. But you've got the QE Unlimited and the race to the bottom, so you've got inflation in luxury goods and some other areas. So it's almost a perfect storm, at least what I'm seeing in Austin, where stuff does cost more money. But at the same time, there is a depression in all the businesses I know people have and uh, in talk radio and everything. I mean, it's demographic. I guess the only growth area is going to be in medicine and stuff like that. So We've seen a lot of uh, developments now where they admit the economy is growing at 0 0.2. That's with Cook numbers. Ron Paul agreed with me that we're probably shrinking at 2 to 3%. That's a depression. So I wanted to get Mr. Den on to give us his global view on the state of the world and, and where we are planetary on a planetary scale, but also in regional scale, and what things like TPP and you know these unelected boards having more and more control mean what it means when corruption seems to be at all-time highs and there's no enforcement, but the very Justice Department that won't go after Hillary is going after the global soccer league. I mean, it just seems like a train wreck. They won't regulate properly nuclear power plants, but they'll harass bigwigs in soccer. Uh, it seems like the Tea Party from Alice in Wonderland, uh, Harry Dent, research.com harry dent that's kind of a gestalt i threw out there what do you want to tackle first well you know alex i'll just start with uh, you know we've been saying that this year uh the economy would be weaker than than uh forecast economists just extrapolate past trends in the future and say oh we're about to reach escape velocity we look at demographics demographics told us in the late 80s that japan was going to collapse it tells us that Germany is going to be the worst hit single country in the next decade, and nobody expects that. It says that the affluent 
in the United States who are the last part of our economy still spending because they go to school later, their kids go to school later, they peak in spending later, they're getting ready to drop off, especially in 2015 forward. So, so everybody's looking for this, you know, endless QE to turn into something when first of all, it's something for nothing. I don't know how anybody gets that you could create money out of thin air, trillions of dollars and solve any real problems. All you do is keep the bubble going that government started in the 80s and 90s. And the more the bubble goes, when it finally bursts, it's going to be more painful from everybody. And China, you were talking about China earlier. I've said over and over again, U.S. doesn't even know what a bubble is compared to what China's done, because China's government has had the most control and impact over their economy. They have overbuilt uh, condos and housing, 27%, industrial capacity, 30, 40, 50%, all other types of infrastructures. They've moved 250 million people in the last 12 years, no skills from rural areas, and they just haven't built stuff for nobody. I mean, they, I mean they, they're building all these empty condos in cities, in ghost cities and stuff. So, so China's the biggest bubble. And, and what I'm seeing uh, as an update, Alex, from last time I was on is, you know, the markets are finally kind of getting in a confused state. They've, they've just been up with all this free money coming in and pumping them up. There's nowhere else for investors to go. But starting in December of last year, they've gone sideways. And the reason is there is a disconnect between the economy in the U.S. And, and, and what stocks are assuming. Earnings are slowing. Retail sales have slowed dramatically. And I by agree. the way, I've got to interrupt you and hand it to you. I wish I had the staff to do it. I have a great crew, but they're always too busy on breaking news. You were on a year ago, six months ago. You literally said by the middle of next year, it'll be clear uh, that the growth is dead. It'll be clear that it's stagnating. It'll be clear that we're not hitting escape velocity. Uh, we had almost all the other economists saying the opposite. So I, I wish your crew would go back to those interviews and get the clips out. We'd play them next time you came on because you really are making accurate predictions here. Yeah, and again, we, we've just got good, simple tools. We're not doing anything magic or complicated. We know from cradle to grave when people spend money on everything, when they enter the workforce, become workers and consumers, when they buy their first house, their largest house, their first car, their, their luxury car, when they spend money on child care, I mean, camping equipment, even potato chips. So uh, what we do is not a mystery. We look at the predictable things people do as they age from the macro. I've got, I've got a graph you guys have. It's called the spending wave. It just moves forward the birth index in the United States, especially for the large baby boom generation. 46 years. That's when the average person spends the most money in their entire life. And you can see all the way back to the 50s how close a correlation with the economy. And you can predict this. We can project out, as you can see in this graph, almost five decades. But note the red line here presently. The because of quantitative easing in response to the slowing of baby boom spending from 2008 forward, something we predicted decades before, and the same we predicted for the collapse in Japan tonight. This, the stock market has just gone ballistic way off the fundamentals. The market's just going up because investors are buying it That's with free money from the Fed, and there's nowhere else to go with investment. So there's a huge disconnect. And so the real economy is stalling in the disconnect. So the folks that are heavily in stocks are still euphoric, but there yeah. is a feeling, as I said, of wonderland Am I right to say when it's artificial, when it crashes, it'll be that much worse? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can see from that graph, we've never diverged this much. So the next crash will be much worse than the last one. The last one was was substantial. I call this, Alex, the market on crack. The mar Just like a person on crack, you're not going to make good decisions. People on crack think things jump off a, a, a roof and fly. That's the, where the stock market's at. But again, I'll tell you where it's worse, in China. China's been slowing their real estate, which we've been predicting for a long time, finally going down slowly at first. Um, but and, and their economy keeps slowing. But guess what? Their stock market's gone up almost 150 percent in the last year. In other words, their economy's clearly slowing and their market's going up. The reason for this is the Chinese who've been speculating in real estate more than any investors in the world. They're huge savers. They love real estate. Now that real estate's going down, they've all of a sudden switched over to speculating in stocks, something they don't even normally do. So this stock market is in a huge disconnect. So, so we're setting up, I think, in the next few months and most for the markets to finally get this disconnect. And, and we see a crash that, that the 
Federal Reserve and central banks can't just solve with more money. I tell you, if real estate in China starts going down, like I think it's going to go down in the next year or two, the wealthy there have so much in that. There's no amount of stimulus the Chinese government or the U.S. government can do to counteract that. Let it, me ask you this question. What will a Chinese implosion then as a guesstimation or dead reckoning look like, and how will it affect the rest of the world economy? Well, well, first of all, now they've drawn their 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 everyday investors into stocks in addition to real estate. So they got two major bubbles to burst. And China's was the greatest bubble to burst last time around. It'd be greater this time. So their economy implodes. Their economy has more income inequality even than the U.S. does. We lead the Western world in this. The top 10% of Chinese households control 60%. Uh, of the consumer of the income and consumer spending they own almost all the real estate so when real estate implodes their wealth will implode when their wealth implodes they will stop spending they will stop buying real estate and not just in china what i'm just getting ready to do a report for our newsletter coming up where we look at how the chinese the wealthy chinese are fleeing in droves the Chinese government does not allow you to take more. That was my next question. Stay there. Amazing that you brought that up next. I wanted to get to this article at Infowars.com. Wealthy installing safe rooms prepare for civil unrest. The Guardian reports world elites are racing to uh, secluded rural redoubts. What is going on? Stay there, Mr. Dent. We'll be back. I'm not selling Harry Dent's books. I actually should on the online bookstore, InfoWarsStore.com. That's how we fund our operation. I certainly read his books and make a lot of decisions, you know, based on the research along with other research I do. And the show's research. We have a lot of great guests on different angles. So basically, we're completely transparent. You just see my whole thinking process here. Uh, he just wants to offer the listener something amazing. He's a New York Times bestselling author. And he's got the new book out, The Demographic Cliff. Uh, that is a bestseller. He's offering the book free today. I'll plug this again in the next segment for him. Free to our listeners. And it's not like these deals you hear where they go, we'll send you free prostate pills, but you know, shipping's $14. The shipping is $4.95. I happen to know what it costs. Probably $3, $4 if it's media mail to actually ship it, and then $2 for the shipping company. I think this is at cost. This is, a, or maybe losing money, this is a true free book deal. And it's a very powerful book. Anyone that cares about their future should read it. It's something you should give city council people, Congress folks. People need to understand this. The elite understand it. They're making preparations. We're not. You can go to harrydentbook.com to find that special. Harry Dent Book. H-A-R-R-Y-D-N-T book.com. Harry Dent book.com. We'll talk about it before he leaves us. This is a short segment, Harry. I want to get back to the big question here. I know a lot of people worth $500 million, $100 million, a $1 billion, $4 billion, $10 million. I live here in Austin. A lot of them live here. And I know some in New York and some out in California. They've all been freaked out for a decade. But the last five years... They've been really moving into rural areas. They've been leaving to New Zealand. Uh, they have been getting out of the country. And when I first talked about this, folks said, no, they're not leaving because of a collapse. You're being a fear monger. Really? I talked to folks that knew James Cameron. And when he left, I'd, I'd already been told he was leaving to New Zealand. Permanently leaving. Okay? So, so you need to understand something. The elite are, every billionaire has left Israel the last six years. They've moved to Switzerland and London and places like that. So I'm kind of taking up the segment here, ranting. We got an article about elites building safe rooms, bunkers, armored redoubts. Mr. Dent, what is going on with this? Well, you know, the smart money always acts, acts first, and in no place more than China. The wealthy in China are leaving in droves, and what they're doing, since their government says you can only take $50,000 out of here, they said, oh, we're not leaving, we're just moving to Irvine, California, or New York City, or Boston, or somewhere or London, or, or Melbourne, Australia. We're just going to get our kids in a good college for a few years. We'll be back. And oh, by the way, while we're there, we got to buy a place. So they buy the most expensive house or condominium they can because they're laundering money. They're getting their money out of the country so that when things do fall apart, because they know the Chinese bubble can't last. Listen, you go in a nice restaurant in Austin, or, or, or I've been with folks out on a fancy golf course, 
it's 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 rich Chinese everywhere. I mean, they're just it's evacuating. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm ranting. Well, you know, but this happened in the late '80s when Japanese had the big bubble in real estate. They were making obscene profits, and they were using those profits to go buy real estate the rest of the way around the world. It's the Chinese that are propping up most big city markets with these 20 million, 100 million condos, which are just insanely overvalued. Rich people in general, there aren't many places they can park that much money. It's either got to be a Picasso painting or, you know, a $13,000 per square foot uh, condo in Manhattan or something. So this is what's happening everywhere. This real estate bubble globally is going to be burst when the Chinese stop. The Russians have been doing this too, but their ruble collapsed, so they, they can't do this anymore. The Brazilians' economy has been collapsing, along with commodity prices we've been predicting would go down. Middle East is being hurt by falling oil prices and civil unrest. So it's really the Chinese are the last people doing this. And you're right, the smart people in the U.S., they see this coming. The smart people in China see this coming. So we want you to think like the smart money. We want your audience, people listening, don't listen to your everyday friends or listen to, you know, the typical media saying everything's okay and Janet Yellen's going to make everything okay. There's no way they can stop this stampede. Well, this let me ask you that question. I'm going to come out and give you the floor to break more of this down in the, in the next long segment. You will tell people what's going on, and some other people will warn folks. Why won't the average successful person want to warn the general public? Is it because they want to have time to position themselves while still making money on the bubble before it implodes? No, no. I, I think I think even most successful business people don't get. It. Like you said, it's really the really smart money, the top point one percent. That, that, that see this sort of thing. I mean, the typical millionaire is not going to see it. People are in bubble logic. I mean, everywhere bubble I go, logic. I, I'm just, gonna steal that. I just lay this stuff out. It's just fact. Everything's in a bubble. They say it's not a bubble, and this economist says it's not a bubble. I throw up the thing and say, it, it looks like a bubble, cracks like a bubble. It's a bubble. This is the most bubbly time. The only more one was the tech bubble, and you can't compare it to that because that happened sure. in both So you're saying it's bubble Bubblegeddon. Bubblegeddon. we got to go to We're break. on the march. Bubblegeddon. The empire's on the run. we come back, we're going to break down the graphs. Alex. And by the way, folks, uh, our economy, they say, is growing at 0.2%. That is fake We'll get Dent, who's an economics expert, to take on that. But I've had Dr. Paul Craig Roberts on, former head of policy of the Treasury. I've had Ron Paul on. I've had Von Mies Institute people on. Uh, John Williams has broken it all down. Two to three percent actual negative. And that's with all this unlimited money printing, which they say is coming to an end. I don't know if that's true. We'll talk to Dent in a moment and get into why the elites are bunkering down or, or fleeing the West or, or, or any other bubble zone. Uh, but briefly, I saw this this morning, and it takes us four days to turn around a new shirt uh, printed up right here in America. A lot of our shirts are cotton from America, printed in America, sewn in America. But if people want them really inexpensive, they come from Mexico and places like that, then they're printed in America. This shirt will be, it'll take me a month to get it made in America. We're going to have a version that's made in America as well. But regardless, it gets the word out. A uh, pack sun pulled upside down flag T-shirt because it hurt someone's feelings, and this is a leftist organization. I would imagine they did it to like down with America or something. Uh, and James Woods, the actor with his millions of Twitter followers, started a big boycott of it. So they pulled the shirt. Well, I don't even know that's a good idea. I mean, let people do what they want. But I thought, hey, I already had an idea for an up down upside down American flag shirt because under federal law, under U.S. code. When the country's in crisis, when a ship's in crisis, when you're in distress, you fly the flag upside down. The flag should be flown upside down when the borders are open and world government's being announced and the president's acting more and more like a dictator. So we're going to have a limited edition. And by limited edition, I'm going to put it out for, I'll put it out to the end of the year. The announcement's made. And then we'll never make it again. It's a Save America shirt. And it's simply, if you're a radio listener, I'll describe it. You can go to Infowars.com. Uh, to see it, and then it also funds our operation to help save America. It says in big bold letters, save America, so people can understand what we're saying, so you don't get in a fist fight. Then under it, the American flag in black and white is upside down, and under that says United States Flag Code, Title IV, Chapter 1. The flag should never be displayed with the Union down, except as a signal of the dire distress in instances of extreme danger or life or property. 
And now is the time to fly the flag upside down. And when folks get mad at you, you say, listen, I love this country. Are we in distress? And they go, yes. That's what you're supposed to do. We need to get people's attention. And I'm going to wear this flag. I'm sure the media will attack me. And I'll say, really? The country is in an emergency. What the flag stands for is on fire. We got communists every week burning American flags, blocking the highway down here and attacking old people and stuff. They don't even get in trouble. The country's in trouble, folks, and I'm tired of it. So the Save America flag, we're going to sell this through the rest of 2015. It'll help support the info war. And when they're gone, they're gone. And we will print this with a Made in America version and another one made in Mexico or whatever, where we can get them the quickest. But we've got black T-shirts in stock. We're ready to print them. They're going to start printing them in the next two days. They'll ship them to us from, what is it, Georgia again. And they'll be here uh, by next week, and we will ship them out to you. Order today, InfoWarsStore.com. InfoWarsStore.com in the regular Patriot Apparel section. Uh, some of the stuff in there is Made in America. If you go to Maiden1776.com, that's the all 100% Made in America section of the site. And so the shirts costing 50 bucks like Made in America, they cost 20 to 25 uh, they, they are a lot less. I mean, a ball cap made in America costs us 10 12 bucks. Made in China, $1. Made in Mexico, $2. So we just offer both. You want to save money, get it from Mexico or whatever, we got it. You want to get it from here, we got it. It does tend to be better quality made in America. But <clears throat> to get this out quick, uh, it's not made in the U.S. It is printed here in the U.S. But that doesn't matter. The point is, get the shirt, support the info war. This will cause conversations. On the front, it says, Save America. United States flag code. So people can say, hey, what's that mean? And you go, well, it means, you know, the country's in distress. was flat upside down. Here's the law. Say, see the back. On the back, it says, our republic is in distress. Upside down flag. Ask me why. Infowars.com. And it's time to warn people. Folks always say, we should start a movement to fly flags upside down. Well, the problem with that is most people don't fly a flag except on Memorial Day or Fourth of July. And your neighbors don't understand what's happening. This is a great way to get that conversation going. It's the whole point of the apparel we have is to start conversations and wear your colors proud. And now is the time to start wearing the flag upside down uh, and, you know, getting those conversations going. All right, going back to Harry Dent, I'll add one more time here. I want to talk about this briefly and then I'll have the floor of the balance of the hour. Uh, you... you, you you hear these ads, and, and I'm not against them. It's okay. We're get your heirloom seeds free, just shipping charge. And you call, it's $10. Well, to ship those seeds and handlings, $4 to $5. Um, okay, fine. Why don't you just say $10 shipping included? And then you're really selling seeds for 5 bucks. I just don't like marketing schemes that, that aren't real. This is real. A book this size, I went and checked, $3 media mail. I don't even know if he ships it that way. He may ship it even better. And then at least $2 for a shipping department and handling the rest of it. You count the cost of a book. I bet the demographic cliff costs probably $3, $4 a print. The, he's losing money. And I know he's a successful writer and is a bestseller. So I got to ask Mr. Harry S. Dent Jr., how are you offering a book where you lose money on it when it's already a bestseller? Do you just want to get it out to folks? Because everybody should take advantage of this at harrydentbook.com. Yeah, we do. I mean, actually, we, we buy the book from the publisher, so it's more than $3. So we lose money on the book, and we break even on the shipping. We just know, you know that people get to know us. Somehow it'll benefit them and us down the road. That, that's, you know, so this is just, hey, you hear this? It sounds interesting. You're not going to have conviction in what I'm saying until you go in this book and look at our four key indicators and look at everything we're saying. Look at how the Japanese economy collapsed when we say it would, how the rest of the world is following in their footsteps. I mean, here, like you say, I go in a whole chapter on this. We've got that demographic cycle I showed earlier, generation spending and not. That's the top one. We got, Next, I came up years later with a geopolitical cycle. Every 18 years, thing, things are great in the world, like 83 to 2000. And then we hit 9-11, and they've been terrible ever since. The geopolitical cycle is going to continue to get worse for the next Five years. So anybody thinks all this terrorism and civil wars and Russia and Ukraine is over, this stuff's only going to get worse. And stock markets tend to be at half the valuations in a negative cycle. So, so this is another reality the market's not getting. Third, innovation cycles. We've seen the best of the internet. It's not that innovation is going to stop, but innovations matter when they move fully mainstream and affect everyday people, not just niche markets. Where everybody's got the internet. 
in broadband and an iPad, an iPhone, and a smartphone, and a this and that. And and so we've seen the best games from that. But finally, the most potent cycle I found, and only about three years ago, is a boom-bust cycle that I used to follow on, on a rote 10-year cycle. And I finally found out it was actually tracked to sunspot cycles. And sunspot cycles are great because nobody understands them. And number two, scientists actually focus on predicting these cycles. They're, they're not 10 years on average like the overall boom cycles have been in the last century. They're 8 to 13 years, so you have to get them right. And there's serious scientists that do. And they predicted the last sunspot cycle would peak in, in November, December of 2013. I mean, 14, and it peaked in, in February of 2015. So that, that's great for me. And, and this, this cycle, all four of these point down at the same time. This only happened once in a generation. It was the early to mid 70s this happened. That was the worst crisis we had back then, the worst stock crash, the worst recession. And then, of course, the early 30s, the Great Depression hit when all four of these cycles are down. So my, my research has evolved from demographics, but I found the other factors that really, really matter. And when all these four cycles point down, you need to understand this. You need to protect the assets you've gained out of this. Well, I want to talk about how you do that, and, and I want you to walk through this. We're putting on screen an article from six years ago, London uh, Guardian, where their Ministry of Defense came out, and the report's linked, Revolution, Flash Mobs, Brain Chips, A Grim Vision of the Future. Their military actually says everything you're saying. Our Pentagon, in, in deeper reports, says what you're saying. The truth is, as you said, the top you know, 1% of the 1%, do understand this. They won't tell the public. I want to ask you why. Uh, I mean, I wish this wasn't true, but undoubtedly, unless everything changes with all their weird computers and manipulation, we're going there. But now we see the signs of it. But before we go there, let me ask you this, Mr. Dent. What, in your view, is the real economy rate if they say it's 0.2%? Well, we just put out an issue of our newsletter where we pretty much said, it looks like we're already in recession starting in uh, December or January. And, and the markets are acting like everything's fine. They're looking at lagging indicators like jobs and housing. Those are the last things to go. Uh, the leading indicators, capital investment, things like that have been going down. Retail sales have been miserable and they keep blaming it on the weather. Well, the cold weather is months behind us and they're still slow. So we're looking at the indicators that matter now, and, and they're saying we're not really coming out of this. In fact, it looks like we're going deeper in recession. So again, nobody can say this. When I go on normal uh, news programs, financial news, I, I got two or three minutes and I can't say anything to convince anybody. Everybody else on there has some special interest. Stock brokers can't tell people or they'll sell their stocks and run. Real estate agents can't tell people the truth or they won't buy a house. No economist can tell people the truth. So, you know, that's why the only people I can affect are people that on a show like this where I get in front of you for a while and if people will actually go to a seminar or read the book because what I'm saying is very contrary. So even people who would like to tell people can't because nobody would believe it anyway. So, so that's why we offer this free book. I mean, I, I want to show another chart you just pulled up. Again, what people don't understand, this is something never has happened in history. Ever since the Federal Reserve was created in 1913, they always manipulate short-term interest rates. You get a slowdown, you get a stock crash, or anything goes wrong, they, they push short-term rates to zero. They make money free to help stimulate lending. Those zero short-term rates mainly affect investment because investors will use that to leverage up. And, and so that causes speculation. What they've never done before on a mass scale is what this chart was showing. They have pushed long-term risk-free interest rates. This is a 10-year treasury bond, the risk-free longer-term bond. And it used to be before QE, you get 2% um, uh, above this risk-free rate for taking a 10-year risk. Now they push this down to zero. Now people don't understand. The best economists do. But people understand every financial asset, real estate, stocks, bonds are uh, directly affected by how low this risk-free rate. The difference between two and zero is huge for mortgages and for the value of real estate. It's huge for the value of stocks when you project the earnings for 10 years and discount them back to the present by that risk-free rate. It's a huge difference if it's zero or 2%. So what the Federal Reserve and central banks have done around the world, again, unlike any crisis in the past, they've 
they said the, the solution to this debt crisis, the solution to this giant financial bubble that they created in the 80s, 90s, and 2000 is to keep the bubble going forever and just to make it more insane. So, so they're calling this an economic or, or uh, experiment. This is insanity to create trillions of dollars and pump up assets way more than they're worth, suck everybody into them. Everybody thinks you can't lose money on stocks can't lose money on real estate. The Federal Reserve won't let them go down. When this thing goes down, people are going to lose money rapidly. I remind people that when the tech bubble burst, 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 now it took almost three years for that bubble to burst for, uh, fully, 80%. The first 40% happened in the first two and a half months. If you don't get out of this and protect yourself ahead of time, it will be too late. That's what, and again, that's what the smart money is doing. Most people will never see this coming. So, there's no more important time to understand what's happening. The real economy has been unfavorable since late 2007 because of demographics. We predicted that would happen 20 years ago and predicted it would happen before it happened in Japan. They were the first to go down. Europe is next, including Germany. So the fundamentals are bad. We had the greatest debt bubble in history. Debt grew at 2.6 times GDP for 25 years from 1983 to 2008. Any economist that doesn't think that's a problem in a crisis brewing, we've never had debt grow that sure. fast that long. Harry so, Dent so is our guest. Uh, Harry, let me ask you this question. Obviously, the elites are digging in with the police state. They think it's going to protect them. But if you've got people in the Depression starving to death when they were somewhat self-sufficient, what's going to happen today with this entitlement society by the middle class, by the elites, by the... 100 million people that are on food assistance in the U.S., 101 million. It seems like a perfect storm once this all unravels. A, B, central banks have been caught. It's in the news. They're going to be meeting in a few weeks secretly in London to push to ban cash worldwide. They've already been pushing it openly. So so those two points, how bad will it get? I mean, I know it's a, on average. I know it, there's 100 ways this can happen. But how does the decadence, the, the entitlement uh, the, the, the whole, uh, just in time to market, uh, fragility of the system affected. And then how does that tie in, uh, to the other points that I was bringing up? Well, you know, uh, you know, this is going to be a global crisis because it's a global bubble stocks everywhere, real estate everywhere. And it's when real estate crashes that you get the worst problems because real estate is financed and now heavily often with no money down by mortgages. So it's heavily levered. So that's why this, the, the, the last downturn was so bad because real estate crashed. But real estate is yet to crash in most cities around the world. So that's going to be the first reality. It's not just stocks that go down. People don't get hit as hard when stocks go down. Real estate goes down. The banking system gets hit. People are underwater. They can't refinance. Now, the, the two areas I'm most worried about, because we've already seen Europe go through part of this crisis and Japan now for decades. Those are very civil places with, with, with older populations and, and not as much kind of crime and violence. I worry about the United States because we have a very polarized society. The rich have been getting richer. The poor have been getting poorer. Like you said, you got all these entitlements built up. The top 0.1% controls massive amounts of wealth. Um, and, and so I think there's going to be that polarized situation is going to lead to some level of civil unrest. And then, of course, I'm most worried about China for those 250 million people with no skills who are going to have to squat in an unfinished apartment and can't even move back to their rice paddies sure. they've been saved over with nothing. They're, they're going to be trapped. And, and, and so, so I do think people have to worry, not just protect your investment, where you live. You want to live farther out rather than farther in. You want to live between the Allegheny Mountains and the Rocky Mountains and not on the coast if you can. I, I think we are going to see some level of civil unrest, uh, even though people can argue, oh, Japan's been through this for two and a half decades and they haven't seen civil unrest. Well, they're an older society. They got yeah, no well, guns. the Japanese didn't didn't rob each other when their country was all bombed to the ground. So they, they act better as when they're attacked instead of we act worse. Let's just be honest about it. We're going to break. I want to ask you this question. And you're right. The elites are moving off the coast into the middle of the country, into the Ozarks and stuff and building redoubts. I mean, that's got to concern people. And billionaires are doing that across the board. But I want to ask you the White House strategy. I know you're you know not political on these issues, but the White House and Soros and others really are trying to get a summer of rage, entitlement, class warfare going 
when they're some of the most entitled people out there. What's the strategy behind that with Mr. Dent? Straight ahead, you can get his book free, except for $5, $4.95 shipping and handling. I don't want to give up too much info on air, but generally, if we have some intel privately, we can just go search it and find it somewhere else in mainstream news or alternative news or in a C-SPAN statement or something. But the whole Carnegie Mellon family and their foundations have been moving into diversified uh, portfolios, into digital, uh, into a bunch of other things, into farmland, things like that, uh, for quite a while and are predicting a massive crash by the end of next year. And then I was separately talking to a source about this, and we did a search, and Nico is in there printing it, I'd forgotten to do this, and there's an article mentioning something in that area. So I, all I'm saying is the elite are acting like it's the end of the world. And then they have national news attacking us because we cover this, saying we're insane, nothing's going to happen, everything's fine. Uh, man, I, I would love to be wrong. But see, I'm not wrong. I'm going off what the big money is doing. Uh, and there's even an article, The Future of Money, uh, BNY, Mellon, The Next Generation of Currency. They're pushing there's going to be a collapse, go to digital. Uh, again, they're global SDR out of the crisis, and they've got the big banks openly meeting and pushing and making statements about banning cash. What's up with the war on cash, and how is the different arms of the establishment, Harry Dent, going to try to ride this crisis into more power? Well, you know, everybody wants to keep this bubble. Again, it's been created for decades now. They want to keep it going. You can't keep a bubble going forever. This is an impossible task, but people will do desperate things, like the government just keeps printing more money. Well, every time they have to up the ante, they have to do double and then triple. And that's what the Japanese have been doing, and now the Europeans. And so all of this stuff is strategies that just try to keep this going at least until the next administration or the next group gets in. Nobody wants to have the next Great Depression on their watch. And I mean, you can't blame people for that. But that's why nobody's telling you the truth. And everybody just hopes we can keep this thing going. You cannot keep this thing going. Well, well answer my question. I mean, I mean, I know you like to go off scientific stuff and graphs and facts, and you make accurate predictions. But you're a smart guy separately from that. They're clearly activating leftist goon mobs, communist race baiters for riots. Why would the White House, Justice Department, and George Soros want to play with fire like that? What is the strategy there? You know, I don't know about Soros, but, but any, anybody in the political establishment will do what it takes to, to you know, benefit them, especially in a difficult situation. So, I mean, I don't get, like you said, on, on the political side as much because as soon as I get too political, I, I alienate half the people. So I, I just say, look, I can tell you what's going to happen over the rest of your lifetime today. Our four cycles will show you where the economy's headed over the rest of your lifetime, your kid's lifetime, for your business, everything. So why wouldn't you want to know that? These are, are objective indicators that make sense. Track but undoubtedly, whether it's this year or next year, all hell's getting ready to break loose. Yeah, our show in the short term we show that the danger period is, is 2015 and 16, and then again in 2018 and 19. Those are probably the most dangerous years ahead. And I think the worst are likely to be in the next two. So I would agree with that report earlier that by the end of 2016, we're likely to see something major occur. So you, you can't afford to wait here and say, well, I'll wait and see, and then I'll prepare. Now, you better prepare now. Absolutely. Well, folks, you can get a free copy of your best-selling book. I appreciate you doing that at harrydentbook.com. Uh, in closing uh, here, uh, just in 30 seconds, what are you doing to protect your money? Uh, basically, the best thing to do is to be in cash. I also buy options where I can say I'm willing to lose this amount of money, but I'm going to make 10 times my money. When the markets have been going up this much with little volatility, you can buy, you can sit, talk to a professional, you can buy... I tell you what, can you do five more minutes on what you're doing? One yeah, minute sure. break. Okay, we'll do a one minute break. Go into overdrive, infowars.com forward slash show. Uh, thanks to all the affiliates out there. All right, final segment, Overdrive. Harry Dent is here with us, harrydentbook.com to get a free copy. Only four ninety five. that pays for the shipping and handling. And then he loses money because they had to print the book. So that's, he's losing probably $5. He says it's a buy for the publisher. Probably like $10 he's losing. But he wants you to read the book. It's so important. And it's about as accurate as you're going to get following demographics. It's what the elite do. They all know this. So we're talking about something that 
that he's helped, you know, codify. So he has trailblazed. But quite frankly, I read globalist reports, Pentagon reports, stuff that Carol Quigley wrote, you know, in the 60s. And they talk about all this, things that Brzezinski wrote. And the four minutes we have left, sir, uh, you're saying basically gambling off knowledge you have on the market on specific things with money you can lose is one of the most successful things you could do. But most people don't know how to do that. So what else? What would you say to, I mean, not individual uh, advice, but what would you advise just in general terms for the general public? It, you know, there's a couple areas. You know, in a boom, you sit there and you sit down with a financial advisor and say, okay, how do I diversify and, and play the upside? Well, the downside is just the opposite. And, and, but, and, and it gets more narrow. There's fewer things will do well. I tell people, number one thing most people should be doing is just get more of their real estate and stocks and financial assets in cash. Cash preserves the value after a bubble. And then when everything crashes, you can buy stuff at 10, 20, 30 cents on the dollar. So that's number one, just cash and very safe short-term bond. Number two, we've been saying this for years, the dollar benefits from the deleveraging of all this debt. They're going to be a lot of dollars and debts and dollars are going to be destroyed and have been. The dollar is going to go up, not the euro, not the Swiss franc, not every other currency. Now, the dollar has been going down lately, so we're looking for another opportunity for people to bet on the U.S. dollar going up. There's an ETF called UUP. It follows the U.S. dollar. Third, to some minor amount, because people shouldn't be speculating. Some percentage of your portfolio, 10, 20 percent, you can use to just basically bet on stocks going down. You can buy an inverse ETF like SH goes the opposite of the S&P 500. So if stocks go down, and remember what I said earlier, stocks go down at least twice as fast as they go up even in a bubble, then you make some money on a small amount of portfolio. And if you're really sophisticated, you can set up options or futures and things where you risk a little amount of money. And it's what, what some people call asymmetric returns. As I said earlier, it's, stocks have been going up with so little volatility, you can buy some of these futures and options sort of things with a little money very cheaply and only put a little money at risk. But again, you should do that as an entire strategy and sit down with somebody who knows what they're doing. You shouldn't just run off this show and say, oh, I'm going to go sure. buy an option. That'd be absurd. But bottom line, if you can accrue cash and liquid assets, yeah. when the depression hits, you can then, at the bottom of the depression, buy real estate, buy companies, buy valuable things, and be yeah. really successful on the other end. In fact, that's how a lot of the biggest fortunes have been made. Yeah, Joseph Kennedy was a great example in the early 30s. And here's the point, Alex. You have to have cash or something producing cash flow. Nobody's going to lend you money when the world looks like it's going down the tubes. So it's the people who have cash and liquid assets that can walk in to situations that are failing and literally say a business like buy your competitor out at 10 cents on the dollar, 20 cents on the dollar, buy stocks at the bottom of the Great Depression, stocks, blue chip stocks were down 89%. Imagine buying great long-term companies that rate. So that's the real, I like the cash thing because you sleep at night, you're not taking any risk, you wait for things to fall apart, then sure. you start buying What stuff. about the bail-in though? More and more they're trying to launch this thing and now in Greece, they're talking about federalizing pension funds to quote protect them. How do you keep them from pirating your cash in the future? Yeah, well, don't have it sitting in a, in a normal commercial bank account or deposit account. You have your money, even if it's in safe, cash-like investments or money markets or CDs or whatever, you have it in an investment account under your name. That's not something a bank can lend against. It's not like something like in Cyprus or Greece where, where banks or governments can come in and say, oh, we're just going to take 10% uh, of all deposits of people yeah, over. Really good advice. I don't have a lot of assets, but to back up this company in operation, I have some reserves that do exactly what you're saying. And that's when you buy is when markets are down. You don't buy when they're up. But, but uh, folks don't listen to that for whatever reason. Mr. Dent, thank you so much. Look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Okay, thank you, Alex. Yeah, his predictions are coming true, ladies and gentlemen. So congratulations on that. Uh, HarryDentBook.com. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com.